All right, Devin, so we've got a little bit of your pool demo here. So I've already done some underpainting. Um, I started with a burnt sienna layer. I scuffed in some blues for shadows, um, kind of a gray tone just to tone some of the side walls and things. Uh, and then some yellows and, and scuffy colors, a few highlights, um, just to build up sort of a base of some of those areas. I'm going to start using some glazes here and sort of trying to keep my brush like once I get a flat layer of the glaze on, I'm going to use my brush to sort of interrupt the texture of it to help create some of those like ripples and modeling that we're seeing in the water. So this first one is pretty green. It's kind of turquoisey. It's a little brighter than what's going to be on the page, um, but we know how it's going to dry. I'm picking up some clear glaze with no pigment in it just to sort of help me interrupt that layer while it's still wet. Sort of a scumbling motion, sort of a X shape but moving kind of across horizontally because of how the ripples are going to visually stack. Mixing a darker shadow one right now and getting that into some of our areas alongside of the stairs, uh, the fronts of the steps, a few of the wall areas. Since the under layer is still wet they're going to mix together and I'm going to get a nice easy blend. You can see I'm sort of putting down heavily and then feathering it out or scumbling it out. So I can kind of be like, there's going to be a big shadow shape here and then softly feather it. And then we're going to go ahead and let this entirely dry. I used a blow dryer. So this is what it looks like when it's dry. We're starting to build up some of those textures, some of those shadows. Uh, it looks a little bit too blue and a little bit too green, too bright. So we're going to start washing in some yellows and ochres because it's actually a very yellow and orange world because of it reflecting the colors around it. Going to add in some burnt siennas. Since my underpainting probably wasn't as spaced out as yours and didn't have as much color, I'd like a little bit more of that sienna showing through before I go too much further. I blotted in just a touch of blue and green into my sienna just to knock it down a little bit. I'm using gel medium with all of these so they're sheer. That's why I'm kind of testing them on the side there so you can see what level of opacity I'm dealing with. Get a little more gel medium on the palette. So I'm going to use my fan brush, which is very, very delicate, very soft. It's nice for just like very like diffused looks. So I've got white with some gel medium in it and I'm going to use my fan brush to just softly buff it into the layers underneath. Uh, our white cools all of our tones and sort of grays them out. So everything seems just a touch vibrant. This little layer of white being worked into those ochres and into those burnt siennas helps to cool them down, helps to diffuse them a little bit and give us a little touch of that like foggy feeling. Uh, it also starts to build up some of our highlights. So by using the fan brush and kind of patting it in, I'm also getting some nice random ripple shapes. But it's fairly transparent as well. It's not a very, very thick coat of white. And since we have still so much gel medium built up on the page that's there from previous things, that's also helping us sort of diffuse. So while that's still wet, I'm going to take that shadow color and just choose a few spots. I've got a rounded filbert brush. I don't want any hard edges right now to do horizontal shadows. So that would be underneath the bodies of your swimmers or along the edges of steps, around the back corners of things. You can see that the filbert, since it doesn't have an edge on it, helps me kind of feather in these shadows. Usually we think of water as being high contrast, sort of like glass, that there's a lot of darks and lights, but this one's kind of muted. It's a lot of mid-tones and then some pops of whites. So I'm going to go ahead and start, that's entirely dried, I dried down all those layers, and I'm going to go ahead now and with that white with gel medium in it on top of a dry um, scumbled, 
I'm going to start adding some fine detail highlights that are all moving horizontal. Um, but there can be some like circles, some curvature to them. They aren't straight lines because they're being affected by the people in the water, creating these sort of rises and falls, little points, little circle backs, little swirls. But our eye generally perceives the edges as horizontal coming towards us. Now I could decide once I've got these kind of scuffed in, some of them with the gel medium can come in very soft. They're picking up the colors from underneath. Other ones, if I've got less gel medium in them, are going to seem stronger, like those in kind of the middle right-hand side. They start to give the water texture and movement. So up till now, we've just sort of been building up the underlayers. I like to use a larger brush with a fine point sometimes, especially when I'm using more water and medium because it just travels a little longer and gets some more unpredictable edges. If you use the same size, very small brush, you can end up with all your lines being sort of the same size. So I use a couple different size brushes so that I have some different size highlights throughout the piece with different levels of opacity. You can see how the white is still really cooling it down as these stack up. It's really kind of giving it that gray feel. So this is when it's dry. You could probably call it done here, um, but I think that there's a few areas that should be a little yellower and that I want to tone some of those whites. So whenever we use a glaze over things that we've already painted white highlights onto, they pick up the color the brightest and underneath it sort of, you know, settles in. So by using a very transparent layer of kind of an ochre with a touch of muddy greens and blues in it, I'm able to tone those areas and it's going to still feel like it has highlights, but those highlights are going to pick up this color most vibrantly. So it kind of tones down those whites, tones down the backgrounds. It's a bit of a unifying wash if you think about it in watercolor terms. A few areas I'd still like a bit greener, but not that bright of a green. So I'm kind of mixing a couple different colors together. I want something a little muddier just to buff in a few areas and very transparent. There we go. Using that to tone under shadows and to marry us between areas that we didn't put any of the ochre wash over. And I'm going to go ahead and pick out just a couple highlights to bring back as pure white. There are very few in your image that have that really bright white highlight, but picking just a few of them to now bring back a little bit brighter. This will dry down. It still won't feel entirely pure white since we're painting on top of a wet layer. Um, will help it just have that little nice contrast level that we're used to seeing in water. I think I'm going to call it done. So I hope that that helped. Uh, you can also feather them with a dry brush if they start to look a little bit too bright. There's that one. Uh, I hope that helped. As you can see, we've kind of let it dry down. You can keep going over different sections of it, finding out what kind of works for you as you're working through. And um, good luck.